traditional Chinese architecture, craftsmanship for timber frame structures has its own unique system and characteristics through thousands of years of development. With so much rich experience accumulated over time, Chinese craftsmen have developed very sound technical methods regarding the choice of building materials, types of framework, manufacturing of components, installation and so on, which have been handed down from masters to their apprentices through examples and verbal instructions. By employing the architectural craftsmanship, various kinds of architecture such as palaces, temples, gardens, residential houses and assembly halls cater to the needs of people from all walks of life, reflect Chinese people's view of the universe, the traditional Chinese hierarchy society, as well as interpersonal relationships and demonstrate the wisdom of ancient technology. Not only are they the projection of Chinese people's unique aesthetics, but also representatives of ancient oriental architectural technology. Different architectural schools with local characteristics emerged during the development of the architectural craftsmanship for traditional timber frame structures, such as the Beijing School, the Shanxi School, the Huizhou School, and the Suzhou School. Timber frame is the core of the structure. There are mainly two types of framework for traditional Chinese timber structures, one post and lintel, and the other column and tie beam. The framework consists of wooden components including columns, beams, purlins, rafters, and bracket sets, generally known as structural frame. The tendon joints connecting the wooden components contribute to the flexibility of the structure, which makes it more earthquake resistant. For instance, the 950-year-old wooden pagoda in Ying County, Shanxi, remains intact in spite of going through many big earthquakes. Planning and construction based on the modulus, components manufactured beforehand, the construction of traditional timber frame structures requires a large number of craftsmen's coordination during the manufacturing process. Therefore, it is necessary to have some unified standards regarding the size of modulus and manufacturing methods. Over 1400 years ago, or even earlier, ancient Chinese craftsmen discovered the rule concerning architectural modulus and worked out the basic modulus unit. It was then possible for the whole structure to be proportionally built in accordance with strict planning. All the components could be manufactured beforehand and installed according to the unified working procedure, making full use of the qualities of the wooden materials and greatly improving the production efficiency. This method became the essence of ancient architectural technology. There is a sound working procedure for the construction of traditional Chinese timber frame structures. Take carpentry for example, a complete procedure which includes tree felling, timber cutting, detailed treatment and so on, has to be strictly followed at all times, although tools and techniques have improved over time. Traditional craftsmen work on the materials by giving their inherent qualities full consideration. To quote their jargon, fat timber for beams, slim timber for columns, which indicates craftsmen's consideration of the load-bearing quality of the timber. The wooden components such as the moon-shaped beam, shuttle-shaped column and bracket set 
are manufactured in such ways that they are not only beautiful in shape, but also emphasize their load-bearing quality. Chinese have always attached great importance to the construction of residential houses. Many rituals have developed in their work and life over time. There are corresponding rules and rituals during different construction stages when certain activities take place, such as the selection of land, planning, preparation for the construction materials, decision on the date for construction, commencing of the construction, completion of the construction, and house moving, etc. For example, on the important occasions when the foundation is laid, the doors are installed or the beams are positioned. Firecrackers will be lit to expel ghosts and devils. Couplets will be hung on the door frame for good luck after the beam is positioned. Traditional Chinese architectural craftsmanship for timber frame structures is mainly handed down from the masters to their apprentices through their examples and oral instructions. There is usually an acknowledgement ceremony when someone becomes an apprentice to a master. The central government launched a general investigation concerning intangible cultural heritage in 2005. Nomination and review concerning a list of representatives were carried out. Amongst the published list, 11 entries concern architectural craftsmanship for timber frame structures. In 2007, the Institute of Architecture Studies of Chinese Academy of Art carried out a great deal of fieldwork and study and established a three-dimensional database for traditional Chinese architectural craftsmanship for safeguarding architectural craftsmanship for traditional architecture. Traditional Chinese architectural craftsmanship can now be studied and recorded with the help of advanced digitalized multimedia. In order to promote knowledge about traditional architectural craftsmanship, a variety of publicity activities have also been held, such as the effort to introduce architecture models to the community or the class. Today, what the ancient craftsmen had left with the Chinese is still widely used and will surely continue to be passed on from generation to generation.